guys. Uh, just coming back to this uh, MS250 that I talked about in the previous video. Um, this is the one that has some sort of m metal sound from the engine. Can't tell, uh, I don't know if it's you know, coming from the flywheel, the clutch, the piston, the, the, the rings, the wrist pin, the bearing, something in there is making like a metallic grindy sound. I don't like the way it sounds. It's a, it's a, the saw has been lasting me a really long time, but I, it's just starting to make that noise where, you know, something's not going wrong, uh, something's going on in there. So I uh, figured this would be a good time to uh, tear it down right before the season. I got a bunch of other saws, but this is like kind of the old reliable. Um, I want to start it up real quick, let you hear, guys hear what it sounds like. Um, might be hard to pick up on the, on the phone, on the uh, camera here, but uh, we'll see if we can get it to, to make the noise for you. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear it there, but it doesn't sound real good at all. It's not even running great anymore. Um, so let's go ahead and tear right into that. Let's see what we find. Um, I'll take the, the easy parts first, which I don't think it is. Uh, could be clutch there, but I don't think it's a clutch. That sounds more internal. So let's start tearing this thing apart and see what we find. All right, first thing I want to do, let's take a look at this clutch. Again, I don't think it's the clutch, but check it anyway. Bar cover off and the bar and chain right away. So we got circuit, washer, clutch, which is, I replaced this last year. It's in perfect condition. And this little roller bearing sounds really good. I replaced that too last year. So that's not the problem. No broken springs. Looks pretty good. Let's get that off. Remember taking this off, this is reverse thread. Uh, the, the proper way of doing this is to block off the piston and then turn this to the right. I just find it much easier to hit it with the impact. And it slides right off. And there's your pleat. So that all looks good. That looks perfect. So we know for a fact that uh, everything on this side is in good shape. Again, I went through this, you know, I, I serviced this not too long, uh, about a year or two ago, and I, you know, all new parts in here. So that all looks good, but uh, looks like I'm probably, I don't have any leaks here, it looks like, but I'm probably gonna have to take this whole thing apart. Let me just pull this side off real quick. Take a look at the flywheel. And this is a T27 Torx bit. I also have the long handle in case I need it to get into deeper spots. And then don't lose this little cup here, you need that. And that'll pop off. I replaced this pull cord not too long ago either, and that's in good shape. Everything looks good here. Flywheel is not loose. You can hear a little bit of like if there's any crankcase play, but it doesn't sound too bad. Now, I'm gonna pull the exhaust off real quick and take a look at the piston. These nuts off. And the exhaust will pull right out the front. Now what I'm looking for in here, let me get these out of the way. I can see the cylinder in the back. And it looks pretty good. Let me see what the piston looks like when I turn this over. I don't know if you can see that, but that that piston looks brand new yet. Still see the little ridges in it. Rings don't look to be seized at all. That looks good. This all looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start taking this thing apart. Get the air cleaner off. Get the carburetor off. The throttle there. Breather hose out of the way. And then we'll take the choke off. And then we'll get the cup out. 
I like the way steel makes things. It's pretty simple to get to. Okay, everything else I can leave there for now. Uh, oh, I know I gotta get this handle off. One part here yet, I forgot that yet. This intake boot has to squeeze in behind. You don't wanna ruin that. So you don't wanna, there we go. Flip it over, and then there's four bolts in the bottom here. Hold on. Okay. There it goes. Take the nut off. You always want to make sure that that uh, key is there. This is built into the flywheel. The key is built into the flywheel. So you'll make sure that sometimes that shears off and then your machine won't run right. That doesn't sound too good. Those bearings are shot. You can hear it. Yeah, they don't sound too good. So those bearings are shot. And I'm gonna make an inventory of what I need to replace. But uh, I'm definitely gonna need bearings for sure, seals. Also gonna check the cylinder here. So it looks pretty good. Tiniest bit right, right here, but actually it's, it's smooth. It just has a little discoloration. I'll take that. Yeah, I don't think this cylinder is in bad shape at all. It looks pretty good, but I'm definitely gonna need some bearings here. Let me get this piston off and see what the top end looks like and then I'm going to see what what's available what I need to order to get this back together so we'll take the circ clip out there and then from this side pin up here looks a little beat up definitely got hot at one point discoloration a couple little grooves right there so I'm gonna look see what's available for uh, you know something that's gonna get me as much as I need you know if the bearings themselves and the seals are as much as like a an aftermarket crank I might just go with an aftermarket crank um, so let's see what's available and then uh, fully be putting this back together so stay tuned for part two. So I ordered some bearings. So we gotta get this gasket material off. All right, got the surfaces cleaned up pretty well. Um, I made sure I cleaned it with uh, some contact cleaner, make sure these surfaces are nice and dry, no oils on them because I need to put new uh, gasket, gasket maker on there. Um, so now I'm at the point where I got to start putting things back together. All right, well, I didn't realize I wasn't recording there, but I used the uh, two-prong puller to pull off the old bearings. These are the old guys. 
and they do not sound good they're pretty crunchy and I put on two new bearings uh, I used a, uh, a socket the size of this inner rim and knocked it down so um, now I got to put the seals on this clip here and then we got to put the piston on but I like the way this feels so much better um, sounds so much better especially with this this new wrist pin and it moves a lot better so what I'm gonna do now is get the uh, seals on one goes here put a little bit of oil on that shaft and the and the seal okay and then the other side this one's a little tricky to get on because of this groove sometimes I've in the past I've had to use like a piece of electrical tape over this groove if I can't get the seal to go on smoothly so we'll try it so it's that little groove right there Yep, so what happens is the spring pops out of the back of the seal. So I gotta I have to put some tape on there. Right, so what I do here is put just enough tape around it where I can also cover that little lip. Make it nice and smooth. And I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to that. So now when this seal goes on it doesn't get caught in that groove and spit the spring out. Should slide right over that. And there we go. So now just make, check down inside there, make sure the spring is in and it is. You would see it, the spring would be sitting out there and now I can remove the tape. Okay. So now that seal is in. Now it's time to put the piston on. This side over here is the flywheel. It's got the flywheel key. This is for, would be the clutch. And on your piston, there's an arrow. All right, there's my arrow pointing that way, which means that's the exhaust. So this is going to go on this way because on the cylinder, the exhaust is in the front and I want to be the, I want to have the flywheel on the left side, clutch on the right side. So I already have one circ clip in there. So let's get this pin in. Started about halfway there. Now let's put the other circ clip in. All right, now we got to get the piston in. Make sure, remember, we're lining up those pins with this the rings if you're putting a new piston on um, these rings go on real slow and delicate uh, I usually start it on one side and I'll roll it around and then uh, I'll get that one down to the second level and then I'll put this second one, the second one on on the top level make sure these little grooves are facing upwards towards the pin like that and now time to put this piston back in and this little circle up too you want to make sure that this fits properly. So for me, I need to move this bearing down a little bit. Let me do that real quick. All right, now it fits properly. And then I'm going to put some oil on the piston. Put some on the cylinder. pinch the rings closed with my fingers. Just make sure that they're lined up right. So we're going in this way. Arrow goes towards exhaust. Lining those rings up. So the first one goes in easily usually. Second one I usually need a little bit of I'm just going to separate these seals a little bit so they go in nice and tight and I'm going to bottom that out because I'm going to have to pull this out a little bit I'm going to clean these surfaces because now I have to put the the, the uh, gasket sealer on there just like to roll it once or twice just to make sure it's going up and down. 
down smooth and it is feels much better no no gritty in there anymore so i'm happy about that so i'm going to pull piston all the way down and lift it up a little bit and leave it like that for a minute all right i want to do a quick clean on this mating surface one, one more time So it's nice and dry and clean. This is, this is RTV uh, high temp silicone gasket maker. This is what we use on the bottom of the, um, the steel chainsaws. Uh, obviously mine is dry, drying out at the top. So I had to cut a little hole in it to get some on there. But I'm gonna try to do this pretty quick. So let's prop that up for a second. I wanna get a good surface right there. I'm gonna put it all on this side and uh, and a little bit along the gaskets here, along the seals here, and then I'm gonna put it all in together. So I wanna get a bunch on here. There's my finger. And then once this all goes back together, you don't wanna start the saw right away, you want this to dry, otherwise you're gonna blow the, the seal right out of it. So you gotta give it about 24 hours before you go and try to start the saw. I know you wanna make sure it works and everything right away, but you gotta be patient and give this some time. Make sure that that groove along the bottom is all filled in a good amount on top here. A little bit will seep out the side and a little bit will probably go into the engines, but that's okay. It's not gonna cause problems. So I got a little bit down here on the on the mating surface. I have it along where the uh, seals go. I'm gonna drop the piston crank down into place. Bearing should rest right on top there, and the seals will press right into the gasket maker. Okay. Now I'll flip this over. that down nice and tight now I want to get this back in the engine right away so I can get this clamp down so that the gasket sealer makes a good bond and is nice and tight all right you can still see it's kind of gapped there a little bit but that's just because I need to I need to clamp it down in and down crankcase bolts flip this over now we want to torque these i don't know the exact torques but just kind of use common sense but i'm going to go in a uh, cross pattern so just kind of firm one then the other, then here, then there, and we'll kind of go through it again. So that's got to now dry overnight, but in the meantime, I can um, I can put the whole machine back together, and then that way, when I come out tomorrow. Uh, just try to start it up and make sure everything works and see if it still makes that sound So if you're doing this for like the first time I would suggest kind of marking everything make sure you know where everything goes so That goes across it's gonna leave that there for now Let's get this handle and Coil back on Make sure that this impulse line is connected i never took mine off i left it on the whole time but you got to make sure that's there or you're not going to you're going to have trouble running all right so that gasket's in that's one of the hardest parts of this whole job now we're 
hook up the coil to ground. And the other one hooks up here, but I'm only going to lightly tighten it because I have to adjust that coil. Then we can put the flywheel on. And the nut goes on. Okay, so I'll come back to this screw because I have to adjust this. I'm gonna get everything else back together first. So we've got the handle screws next. Handles back on. All right, let's align this coil correctly. Use the old business card trick. Pull that out. So now we're not hitting and it's moving nice and close. So you can always come back and adjust that later. Uh, for now, I'm happy with that. Get the carburetor back on. Gasket. Carb and this fuel line that keeps leaking on me because I never blocked it off. Next is my choke. Oh, so now my choke can go up and then I, that's how I shut it off. There's your kill switch. Okay. Now the throttle hooks in the back. Goes and orients this way. This hooks into the throttle. This hooks into the handle right on this little clip here. Just gotta kind of lock it in place, hold it in place. All right, uh, camera died, so uh, it was a good time to let me just let this sit. So this uh, RVT can all dry. So this gasket sealer can all dry. And um, now I'm just getting back to putting the uh, carburetor back on. So you saw to put the linkage on. Now I'm going to put the air cleaner on. <laughs> That's right. Got to do what you got to do sometimes, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. You too, man. See ya. Yep. Thank you. Right. Got the air filter on. Let's get the side cover on. Remember this one with the cup here? Goes at the top here at the handle. Other three are just standard. Clutch back on. So worm gear goes in first. Protection plate and backwards thread clutch. Remember that's reverse thread. And then your clutch sprocket. And when you're putting this on, there's this the worm gear has a little arm that's right down here. And then that little notch needs to line up with that little you can actually hear the the arm of the worm of the oiler hitting the inside. So I know I'm lined up right there. And then this clip. Now, just got to put the exhaust back on.
to put the bar back on. I usually just finger tight this and then I'm going to prop the and then I'll prop the bar up to adjust the chain tension. Just want to prop something underneath the bar like that. Make sure it's good, which it is. And then I'm just going to tighten the nuts. All right. So if everything goes as planned, this should start up. Forgot one key component. <laughs> so then all we gotta do is put the spark plug in, which I probably should have done this first. Spark plug's in good shape. All right, let's give this a shot. sound of that. I'm going to turn my microphone off here and let it run without the microphone so we have a uh, comparison from start to finish. Um, hold on a second. Now let me try it again. It does sound better. better there um, so I'm gonna take it out and play with it this weekend and see how it goes but uh, otherwise all said and done um, I'll let you know how it goes after that but otherwise guys you got any questions comments uh, anything you see you could do better just let me know in the comments and uh, make sure I'll catch you guys next time see you later <laughs> Oh, 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 oh.